three of them available. Some trims on the top makes it feel like a gold cut and it's still very balanced. Hey guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. Today we are driving the all new Mini Countryman. This particular version is considered to be the highest spec for the standard Mini Countryman. This is called Mini Countryman S All 4 GCW. Although it does have a name, name GCW in it, it's not the proper GCW. Instead, you are getting all the GCW treatment with a 2 liter turbocharged petrol motor. Today we are going to go for a walk around exterior, interior, and I'll show you how it looks like, how it drives on the point of view test drive. In terms of pricing, this vehicle starts at 54,990 for the base model Mini Countryman. If you're looking for this particular spec with all the bells and whistles, plus the 2 liter drivetrain with the all wheel drive system, this one's price tag is 71,990 plus ORC in New Zealand market. If you're looking to purchase one in Auckland, New Zealand, why not contact Mini East Auckland? I'll leave Eric's contact details down below on the screen. In terms of dimensions, this Steffi has outgrown the last generation by quite some margins. It's now a pretty much close to a medium-sized SUV. I guess it's making its way for the Aceman, which is going to be a compact SUV on the market. So this has a wheelbase at 2.67 meters long, and the whole length is over 4.4 meters long. In terms of width, it's over 2 meters with the wind roll cover or under 2 meters when the wind roll is folded in. So yeah, definitely a lot more bigger than the old generation, so to speak. In terms of exterior, it is a nice step up from the last generation, but you are still seeing the same design language across the countryman over the years. Two-tone finish on this particular version with A-pillar, C-pillar, roof, roof rails and everything at the back, it's all black colored. That looks nice. This one has finished in the 19 inch alloys. This is glossy black. You can option for up to 20 inch on this particular design. GCW, GCW on the wheel cover, on the brake caliper, and GCW on the sapler as well. Again, that makes this car looks rather nice. Now let's go to the front because this is one of the biggest change on this look. So you get a new headlights, full LED of course, some glossy black, some matte black finish for the front bumper. This I believe is mounted for your driving safety technologies. Parking sensor underneath, cameras available, also 360 view is also available. Another GCW badge over here, but if you don't go for this version, you can go to low version, you don't get all these GCW badges and all that things. On the top, black mini logo, some crossing lines, plus the black racing strap looks really really good so yeah this is definitely a really good looking car let's walk to the back and this is how the tailgate looks like i love the tail lights by the way you can actually personalize this to a different look or different design there are three of them available black badge of gain countryman logo over here the s logo means this is a two liter turbocharged motor some black panels underneath plus the indicator lights everything again this looks great. In terms of tailgate, this has a power lift gate, or you do get a kick. That work, just like that. The opening speed is really fast, S3. In terms of boot, if you open this, you get additional cover underneath, plus the tire mobility kit. This does not come with a spare wheel. Combined, you are getting over 460 liters of boot space with additional storage on the side and small pockets on the side. Next, I want to show you how this cargo cover looks. Look at the mini logo, look at the textures, look at the design. They do not have to do this, but this is rather nice. Next, the rear seats does fall down 40-20-40 split. That means over 1,000 liters of boot space combined. That's very really useful. Before we get inside, I love these flash looking door handles. It's very good for aerodynamic, but it's also very easy to open. Um, anyway, let's jump to the rear seats. First thing, full leather finish on this particular version. Uh, for the GCW version, you don't get any other options, but for the standard version, you can actually choose different colors interior, which is rather nice. Red stitchings over here, white stitchings or gray mark stitchings on the side. They are nice and soft and squeegee. Now, once we're inside, this is my sitting position. I'm about 178 centimeters tall. I've got good amount of leg room, good amount of foot space, really really good amount of headroom as well so yeah this is surprising very well compared to the old generation in terms of storage we got pockets over here air vents usb charging and some pockets underneath in the center 
nice armrest with the cup holders in between. In terms of middle row, let's step in. So headroom and leg rooms are actually okay, but because you get center tunnel, my leg has to be like this. That means if someone actually sits on the side of me, it's going to be quite limited for me to stretch my legs. But yeah, that's what it is. In terms of door material quality, I love the new door handles, they are very solid. Some sort of fabric stitchings on the top, texture is really really good, design wise, nice. Some design over here, I guess that's for your speakers. And then after that, it's just all plastic panels and these. So not that premium, but the front looks a lot better. Next, this is how the front looks like. Full leather seats again, with some trims on the top, some stitchings, again, GCW looks everywhere. Memory, heated, and electric adjusted driver seats are also available on this particular spec for the New Zealand market. Additionally, you got the panoramic sunroof, that's also available, so that's really, really nice. Step inside, this is a nice place to be. Switch it on with the twist dial, just like the traditional Mini Countryman or Mini Cooper. Once we're inside, we'll find the door panels and material continues at the front dashboard and behind the dashboard, everything. The material on the side is a little bit better compared to the rear seat because you get a little bit more leather and softer finish around the doors. The leather steering is really, really nice. The whole steering size is actually fairly small for the medium size SUV range, but this is very thick. So everything is quite thick, very well built. So handling all the things makes it feel like a go-kart. Let's put it that way. Indicators and all the things are very similar to some of the BMWs. The buttons on the steering are also very similar to some of the BMWs in terms of quality. And in front of us, there's no dashboard. You do only get a head-up display. It's a pop-up head-up display. So not the most premium head-up display, but you are going to see your speed fairly easy. Along with that, you get your speed permanently displayed over here for your driving information. So that's another good thing. And speaking of this media system, it's really, really cool media system. So the overall size is about nine inch. So just going across this way. So that's pretty much the panel you can see. But to be fair with the top and the bottom, this is a much larger screen than nine inch. So the indicates um, you can get quick adjustments for your app. You can get the navigation, which is a full screen display for navigation. Again, that's really cool. Air conditioning system is pretty much all in the built-in system apart from two physical buttons and the cool thing about it you can change different experience like you can get different appearances you can do the sports mode which is called go kart and you get your personalized sound when you drive the vehicle and uh, you can also do personal so you can personal the background from your phone app and that's really really cool i really love this a lot of touch a lot of personalization on this particular screen that means Look at that, how cool is that? Along with that, your dashboard also changes the color, by the way. So yeah, a lot of personalization you can do. Along with that, this is connected to the internet, so you can actually connect to your mobile app using your mobile app to get access to the car. So you do not need to carry the physical key all around if you do not wish to. There are many, many settings on this particular screen that you can personalize everything. One thing I really like is you can change your ambient lighting colors. You can do select by mini or you can personalize it. It goes around the door bins. It does also have a project light display over here, somewhere around that and also here as well. Surprise me is another cool feature. You can do this as sort of a lottery ticket. That means you will let the screen to choose your color you want for tonight. And that's really, really cool. Let's see what we end up with. Great performance, right? That's nice. If we move down to the center, we are getting the engine stop start button, uh, gear shifter, very small but easy to use. Some direct buttons underneath, has a light, aircon, and also your cameras. Speaking of camera, this is what it looks like. Very nice, crystal clear, 360. It's on the full screen, but it's it's okay. You, you'll be okay with that. Experience is your drive mode button, and this is the volume or on and off button. Next to us is the wireless phone charging, which is nice. And some storage over here, two deep card holders, some storage here, some storage over here. There's no storage on the armrest, but you can move it forward, backwards, and they are very soft leather finish. Glove box is okay for the size. That's pretty much all about the interior. 
Personally, I really love this. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments. It is very, very unique. I should absolutely put that way. I love the stitchings. I love this fabric contrast, everything, textures around the doors. And I love you can personalize so many things on this vehicle. All right, we are good to go. Let's get in the road to see how it goes. First, we're going to drive through a car park so I can show you with the headlights on and how the ambient light looks like on this vehicle. It's really, really cool. Let's just recheck what sort of... So we're going to start with the core. Core is more of a basic or standard drive mode on this vehicle. And we will eventually go to the go kart, of course. First thing, I love this steering. It's so unusually proportioned, I think. It is one of the funniest steering I've ever handled. It's like a go-kart, but yeah, interesting. Look at the ambient lights. They're not the brightest. I haven't changed to the most sort of top brightness, but very cool to look at it. Look at the texture. It's printed out or it's projected onto the screen. Again, that's rather nice. I also love the visibility on the new one. It's much, much better than the old generation. I know the old generation looks really nice on the Wimro cover, but the Wimro has always been really, really small historically, where this one is definitely a different game in terms of visibility. Because the vehicle is larger, it's, you know, it's wider, um, you're actually seeing a lot more with the Wimro and I do appreciate that, and I do appreciate that sort of small change. All right, once we're on the road, let's quickly go through some numbers. So this vehicle is powered by a two liter, four cylinder petrol motor, turbocharged, of course. It's combined a 48 mild hybrid sort of technology that helps with a little bit more on the fuel consumption and also emissions as well it's not a fully proper hybrid in many means in terms of power it's got 160 kilowatts of power output and 360 newton meters of torque controlled by a seven speed dual clutch sports transmission this gcw is equipped with the gcw sports suspension where it's very close to the standard suspension you get. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit sportier and with the GCW brake, uh, performance brakes as well. Brakes is fun. At low speed, when you want to take off, you're going to feel there's a little bit transmission sort of lag or turbo lag here and there, but overall it's still quite pleasant. And if you put the foot down, it is fast. I'm not going to do it around this area, but I will do it once we go out on open road, hopefully. And even at low speed like this, on the core sort of experience or core driving mode, which is just a standard normal driving mode, it handles great. Just like all the other minis you've driven probably, or you haven't driven, on the planet, the Mini always handles exceptionally well. These guys, no exception again. Again, normal mode. Surprising, this sounds well as well. So there is a vehicle setting. You can personalize this particular sound to make a little bit more artificial sound through the vehicle speakers. It makes the whole experience very nice without annoying the neighbors that much, to be fair. But overall, even at the normal mode, this felt really, really nice to handle. It is still a driver's car, although it has outgrown many, many competitors, but it is still a very, very nice driver's car, in my opinion. Turning again. It's really solid turning. It's fairly sporty. It's nothing short on sportiness for a medium-sized SUV like this. And again, this is a big car now compared to what we have. Let's go to the most amazing mode just to see how it goes with the go-kart. Love that ambient noise, by the way. 
now you have seen the dashboard everything changes to the whole performance of the dash Well, I didn't know that. You can actually press the pedal shift on the left to boost it for counting down 10, 9, something like that. That's really cool. I love that small touch. Listen to the sound. I love that. That's so cool. Again, let's go back to the drive mode or normal automatic mode just to see how it goes over here. Again, this handle is very nice, it's so easy and it's still very very solid at the meantime, very comfy on the city driving roads. You can definitely hear the sound, it's certainly very loud uh, combining the artificial sound interior plus the real exhaust um, from the exterior and that's what your experience is like on this vehicle. It is really really nice, it sounds really really well, sounds like a hot hatch I'm pretty sure, like a proper GCW for sure. And in terms of acceleration the power is fairly easy to take. Again, at low speed, you may get a little bit hesitation, but once you get up to the speed, the response is really good. And once you change to the go-kart driving mode, it is really, really responsive. We won't be able to be able to slow much lower, uh, but we are able to have a small acceleration over here. One, two, three. It's not bad. Again, the acceleration on high speed to on the sports mode is very, very, very smooth. Um, definitely no issue on things like takeoff and handling around these areas are really good as well. I can feel the chassis is working nicely around these bouncy corners. Look at that, it's supposed to be really rough, but I'm not feeling it too much on the roughness on this particular surface, and it's still very balanced. Noise level is fairly low. It's quite muted for the noise cancellation. So that's definitely not a bad thing at all. Now we're finally in the roughest area around this road so you can feel the vehicle is going to have a little more bounce here and there because again this is a sporty vehicle in the handling part so it's not the most comfortable vehicle in comparison i think the new bmw x1 is a little bit more comfortable than this although they pretty much come with the same sort of platform or chassis But in terms of handling, this is a little bit more exciting than the BMW X1 for sure. There's no shortage of fun if you drive this on a country road or a 1D road like this. Alright, let's hope we can do a small boost over here. One, two, three. Certainly not bad at all. There's not much hesitation once you put the vehicle on sport. I think driving on the standard core mode, the vehicle is not the fastest in some response on, on the DCT transmission, but once you switch to sport mode, it is really responsive. And look at the handling again. This is the highlight of this driving machine. 
when you handle the thing it is so nice it is rather nice to handle this vehicle and that's great And when you drive on a nice seal like this, it is really quiet. You are hear a little bit more engine noise because it's on sport mode at high rives, but that's pretty much it. It is really, really well balanced. So yeah, it's definitely a big step up from the last generation compared to what you have if you're driving a Mini Countryman before. This is a good all-rounder car now. It's fun, it's agile, it's sporty at the meantime it is large and you can take the families out that's pretty much the end of this video i hope you enjoyed the content if you do do not forget to subscribe like in the future we'll also drive the mini countryman electric vehicle and i would also drive the mini aceman when they become available in new zealand so definitely subscribe like check other videos on the channel if you like for more new zealand contents that's the end of this video i'll see you next one